Hello everyone, this is Gary Marr from Glendale Community College. This screencast is from my CIS 150AB online class summer of 2017, Fundamentals of Object Oriented Programming. Um, this first screencast, I just want to talk a little bit about what is out there in terms of the resources on Canvas, a little bit of my expectations, a little bit about this course and how I've taught it over the last 15, 16 years. And also remind everybody that is in fact a five week online class. So it's going to go quite quickly. And so I'm going to ask everybody to be paying attention while we do that. Let me start by saying this course was designed to give you introductory knowledge to structured programming, object oriented programming, and event driven programming. All three of these approaches are consistent with a software that's created in today's world of technology. This would help you on everything from developing website applications to mobile tablet to creating applications for the PC, even creating applications on mainframe computers. It's going to cover everything from console apps, which typically are your you know black screen, white text, simple uh, brute force applications common in you know days gone by to some of the more sophisticated GUI apps with drags and drops and, and all kinds of stuff with uh, touch sensitive screens, etc. This class is designed to give you fundamental knowledge that carries across all programming languages. This class has been recommended by some of the C Sharp and Java, Visual Basic, uh, some of the other instructors to help their students reinforce some of the concepts they learned in class and it's also used as a warm up to those programming languages. Again, the course is built around three separate distinct sections. One is structured programming. We deal primarily with variables, constants. We talk about modules. We do if statements uh, or decision structures. We do uh, looping, repetition structures, calculations, or sequence structures. Uh, typically, most of these examples will be done in um, pseudocode. I don't want to do too much with Python given the length of this class and five weeks with Python. It's a very easy language to learn. It looks very much like pseudocode, which we'll talk about in our first chapter's uh, lecture. But um, I'll use Python to show you and illustrate how the, um, the program moves through logic and how its values change and how it actually performs the tasks you want it to do. And you may pick up Python in, in the course of this, but Python will not be on tests. It will not be in assignments unless you choose to use it. Uh, I have typically in the past, if you have a language you want to complete these assignments in outside of pseudocode, you may do that. But most of the lectures and examples will be done in pseudocode with a few done in Python. I have programmed and been programming for many, many years, and I've worked both professionally at IBM, GE, Karsten, VSP, a whole bunch of places, Savin, uh, in various roles as a uh, designer of applications, um, working with users to develop their applications, third, fourth generation programming projects. This class will be a combination of techniques and concepts which are known theories and, and, and uh, also um, known concepts familiar to all programmers, but it'll also have a healthy mix of what I would consider practical education or experience that I've had on the job for the last 35 plus years. So you're going to find a little bit of, of everything in there, and um, you're going to find that I'm going to talk about programming as being a very labor-intensive activity, and I'm going to talk about the fact that most of you are going to have to get uh, a little dumbed down to be good programmers because computers don't think as well or as efficiently as humans do. And this will be part of the course that is more based in my experience as a programmer and as a person who's helped other people learn uh, how, to, how to program. Um, let's see, what else could I say here? Um, this is five weeks long. This class is going to move very quickly. Um, it's normally taught in a 16-week time period. Uh, it should be able to be done in five weeks, but you're going to have to pay attention and don't don't uh, tax yourself with too many other activities involving school. Um, you're going to have uh, some weekly assignments. You're, well, not weekly. You're going to have 10 assignments. You're going to have some weekly reflections. You're going to have some discussion questions. You're going to have reading to do. You're going to have videos to watch. Plan accordingly. As much as possible, I try to design my classes in a format which is consistent through the entire class period. So you can pretty much rely on assignments being due for the most part the same days, for the progression through the week to follow pretty much the same order, discussion, questions, reading, followed by assignments and tests. Um, I think this has worked in the past. There's no reason to believe it won't work for this now. I think Canvas is an excellent tool for us to use. 
the one thing that I would like to equate you, or at least acquaint you with at this point is that this on the screen now is basically my view of the Canvas class. It'll look a little different than, than what you guys are going to see, but for illustration purposes, it should be fine. Um, the syllabus speaks for itself. Modules. Each week you will have a module, and in that module will have various activities or or examples or references or resources to help you out. This will coincide with a calendar, which is also in Canvas, and hopefully that will help you in terms of making sure everything done on time. If you have to be late on something or if you have some sort of problem, the best thing is let me know about it because then we could probably deal with it. Not showing up into a classroom or doing a discussion or blowing off a couple of assignments might find you being withdrawn for inactivity. Uh, you're going to find the assignments are all laid out in here. The assignments are case studies, which basically build upon each other. Uh, Moosehead Skateboard is the one we're currently working on. I'll let you guys peruse through that and look at it as, uh, as you have time. You'll find that it coincides with the materials in the chapters, and each assignment gets a little bit you know, more information, a little bit more, more techniques or concepts covered in it. Quizzes, we've got uh, three, or excuse me, four tests. The tests are a little different. I'm doing them differently for the online class. You'll be able to take the tests as many times as you want. They'll be basically, or excuse me, quizzes as many times as you want. They'll be primarily true-false, multiple-choice questions. There will be two exams, a midterm and a final. These will be worth um, 60 points each. Ignore the 50. That's a typo. And they will primarily be essay questions, short answer questions, where you have to look at some code or create a code snippet, some little piece of pseudocode to illustrate an answer for the question. Um, these will be taken once. These are more traditional tests. You'll have one opportunity to take these, and that'll be it. The other tests, the quizzes, if you will, you can take those as many times as you like. However, the last one is the one that'll count towards your grade, so you want to make sure your last one is your highest score. I will open these up so you can take these any time throughout the semester, and for all intents and purposes, as many times as you would like to. Um, I, don't, I don't have any plans at this point of closing these quizzes off. Discussion questions. There's four questions in here. Uh, the discussion is important to cover those topics, which aren't necessarily uh, those kind of empirical binary concepts, but just some things to think about, stuff that might show up as you're programming. Uh, things like uh, everything from why, what you, why you're taking this class and what you want to be when you grow up to why programming standards are important. And there's four of these all together, each worth 10 points. Um, Pages and files, I would encourage you to look at both of these. The pages are going to have resources to links, uh, important links, or they might be summary pages. For example, you might have a page out there with all the videos that I'm going to cover in this class on a one link page as opposed to having them placed inside of modules. Files, you're going to find the files, everything from the PowerPoint sides, which we probably won't do too much with. I might use them as part of my lectures, but they're good summary documents. I'll leave them out there. And you'll also find some of the class examples or topics I'm talking about in my lecture in files. And you'll find some other um, files out there in files that might help you better understand the concepts being covered. Uh, any questions about there, obviously you want to ask me about them and you know I'll, I'll address it to you specifically or to the entire class if it's something everybody needs to know. Um, I don't have anything else right now to say except that on to chapter one. That will be the next video. This is our kickoff video and our video session and screen capture, if you will. Um, obviously, you guys give me a call, send me an email. Um, whatever you, whenever you have a question, just let me know. You'll be asked each each week to finish. I forgot about this. Each week you'll have a reflection assignment, which is uh, essentially um, a couple of paragraphs you'll send to me as part of Canvas that will talk about what you learned and where you're having problems. And that will let me uh, help you then and also maybe understand as a class where there might still be some questions I need to, to uh, perhaps address in the next week is to kind of clear things up. That's it for now. Thank you very much. See you in Canvas. See you in class.